Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today's episode is a little bit for the specialists, so it's not very sensational. Actually, I'm not shooting at all, because I want to demystify tapered bands. What is a tapered band? Well, let me explain. You can see the slingshot, and you can also see that the band has the same width at the pouch side and at the fork side. Which means that if I put it out, you can see this on the marked bands, that it stretches very evenly. It's a long-lasting band, it's quite powerful, but if you take the bands and cut them in a different fashion, so that, as you can see here, it is wider at the fork and more narrow at the pouch, then what happens is that you get, with the same draw weight, you get a lot more speed and power. And one explanation is clear, if I pull it out, you can see that it stretches more towards the pouch than towards the fork. Clearly a difference. But since Destin was here last week and he brought his great Vision Research Phantom camera, we recorded this at a thousand frames per second and this allowed me to do all kinds of evaluations and for the first time ever probably see and explain why tapered bands are so much more powerful and how much more powerful they are. Well, see for yourself. So we're starting with untapered bands. Tobias is shooting and we're pulling it backwards and now we have a thousand frames per second. And you can already see the speed that is accelerating. Now I play this back 10 times slower. And you can see it's accelerating slowly but steadily. And still tension in the bands. Now the band tension is over and you can see that it's creating some kind of ripples. Play this back. Quite interesting. Okay. Now we're changing to tapered bands. Let's see if there's a difference. Tobias shooting again. And you can see it's accelerating far faster from the beginning. And it's probably a lot faster in the end too. Let's play this back 10 times slower for you. So that's now 10,000 frames per second. And you can see it's already not even at his face and it's over 50 meters per second. And it's accelerating until 72 meters and then the ripples occur and then the acceleration stops. Very interesting. But to really see the difference, I think it is necessary to watch both shooting methods uh, side by side, like in a picture in picture. There you go. That was a little quick to see, so I played this back five times slower, and you can see how much faster the tapered bands are. They're accelerating more, and they're immediately faster. Really nice. You can see this the other way around when it's coming back. Now let's, now, now let's look at a graph. How this, does this look like? Here you can see that's the speed of the untapered band. And this is the speed of the tapered band. You see it starts a lot faster and it stays faster and actually the gap widens over time. Quite interesting. Now I've got some more selected shooting studies for you. You can see Tobias shooting. Pretty interesting because you can see these ripples again. Let's play this back five times slower. You can see it's still accelerating. Now the ripples occur and there is no more acceleration. Very nice. So you can see Destin shooting, pretty much the same thing. For some time the pouch and the ball are exactly at the same speed. But this doesn't mean, see the ripples occur, this means that's the end of the acceleration. This is a shorter band set, so it's occurring later. It's a larger band set, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's accelerating and the ripples occur means the tension is away. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, that was quite interesting, wasn't it? Actually, uh, Dan, also known as ZDK189, um, has a great blog and he goes far more into detail with this data. So if you're really a slingshot enthusiast and also you want to learn a little bit about the physics behind it, 
I recommend clicking on the link and following to his uh, following to his blog. Um, it's it's actually worth it. Well, that was it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks and bye bye.